Unit 4, part 10, just finished talking about if and only if and the lottery examples for them. Uh, so now we're going to talk about unless, right? It's another English expression which gets translated with the hook. So this is discussed in the conditional, the section on conditionals, section 3 of unit 4. Um, and it's another expression that causes quite a bit of trouble. But um, first of all, the rule. Whenever you see unless operating as a sentential operator, and as a truth functional sentential operator, it will usually be. Um, whenever you see unless, the rule that you need to remember is just that it equals if not, right? You can basically, you see, so right, remember the two things you have to do, know which expressions do get uh, symbol, do get translated into symbols and also know what symbols they get translated into. So when you see, when you're presented in your exam, say with a English sentence, blah, 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 unless something, something, first two bells should go off. First bell, ah, unless, that is a word, uh, that is a truth functional connective, right? That is gonna get expressed with some logical symbolization Okay, what is the logical symbolization appro appropriate for unless? Okay, the rule is just whenever you see unless, you can cross it out and, repla and um, replace it with if not, right? So blah, unless blah, has the logical for form blah, if not blah, right? So if not. Um, also, as you'll see when you read through the clank section, it's also equivalent to or, right? A unless B is A or B, so it can be given the wedge, um, but I'm going to focus on if not, I think it's the more intuitive one, but um, as Clank stresses, there are many uh, symbolizations, non-identical symbolizations, which can all be correct answers, right, because um, many symbolizations are logically equivalent to each other, so if you provide an answer which is logically equivalent to any correct answer, you've given the correct answer, okay? Um, so, the rule is, unless, you can translate as if not. Now, again, if, it's now clink 63, if you're in the exam and you can't quite remember that, right, the second bell isn't quite going on, going off, oh, unless, that gets translated as something, I can't quite remember what the logical form is, what I'm supposed to replace it with, is it a wedge, is it a dot, is it just a hook? No, um, but you'll be able to, Let's use this lottery example, this sentence using unless, which says, you won't win the lottery unless you have a ticket. That sentence is pretty clear in meaning and you should be able to derive yourself from your understanding of the sentence its correct logical form and that will supply for you the rule unless is equivalent to if not. Okay, so what do I say, what do I mean when I say, that is, what is the logical form of, you won't win unless you have a ticket won't, if we're doing this properly, um, won't, that's, you will not win, that's negation of you will win, so uh, we had it over here before, W equals you win the lottery, T is you have a ticket, okay, you won't win unless you have a ticket, means you won't win if you do not have a ticket, right, so you will not win if not, if you do not have a ticket, which then gives me the symbolization, okay, so what follows the if is the antecedent, major operator, the hook, what follows the if is the antecedent, and the antecedent is the negation, so the not goes here, T. If not T, then you won't win, not W. Read this back and make sure that as it reads back, when you say this, uh, when you say this formula in English, its meaning is logically equivalent to the original meaning. What does it say? Okay, how do we say this? Say the major operator first, which is this, right? If it's not the case that I have a ticket, then I will not win the lottery. Or if it's not the case that I have a ticket, then it's not the case that I'll win the lottery. If I don't have a ticket, then I won't win the lottery, which does mean you won't win unless you have a ticket. So notice with the translation of unless to if not, the if is the major operator, not is the not attaches to what is then the antecedent. 
right? The node attaches to the antecedent, it's sort of subsumed. The major operator is the, the hook, and the knot it just attaches to the, the antecedent. So as it were, the, the if takes precedence over the not in terms of the overall form. When you're translating, unless as if not. Okay, so uh, I won't run through the details of section four. This has already gone into 10 parts. Um, section four is very, very crucial, and it's crucial you read through it, but the lessons I will, from it I will sort of um, provide by going through some of the examples, uh, so going through some of the exercises, sorry, exercises. Um, but let me say again, so section four is the actual one symbolizing multiple, multiply complex sentences starting on 65. As I said before, um, 60, uh, that's page 65. And where I've got the one, two, three there, um, that's the bit, that's the bit which, um, where's my finger? <laughs> that's the bit which says, uh, tells you the one, two, three step procedure. The best way to work out the logical structure, once you've identified and, abbre identified and abbreviated the simple components, pick out the major operator first, write that down, and then go on to symbolize the components. So you see that in practice very well, especially the most important page, perhaps, is chapter 66. Read through this in, in uh, very closely and make sure you understand it all. Right, so 66, she's working through um, an example, uh, also another one that, that's played out on 68 there. 68. So on both these pages, she's, she's working through an example, explaining every step of her reasoning. And she's, she's showing you the, the, uh, the use of the three-step procedure in practice. Right? This is exactly what you need to know, how to, how to actually carry it through faced with an example. So that's what you have to do. Um, and so notice that what she does there, in each case there's partial translations. And you'll see me do it when we do exercises in the next part. Um, so what she does, the crucial thing to, to take note of in how she does it is, in how Clink does it is, right, she first of all identifies the simple sentences and gives them letters. So for example, page 66, you see step one at the top there, right, you've got the simple sentences have been replaced with letters and notice that all the uh, English words that will get symbols are still in place. Also the punctuation is still in place. Right? So we've replaced the simple sentence with the letters. All those English words, those are logical words. Those are going to get symbols. Notice there's an unless there. Right? What have we got? It says, if both, logical words, right? If both I and you, comma, then, not are, unless, either, S, or both, O and G. So now, at that stage, now she's, now's the, the, the crucial step two part, right? The fact that step two comes at step two rather than step three. The fact that it's identified the major operator and symbolized that first, put the components in their place, and then go to, to symbolizing the components. And for the components, you'll notice what she does is, the components here are complex, uh, themselves quite complex, right? So she'll, she, so look at step two, right? You see the hook has appeared. She's identified the major operator, right? It's uh, if I and you, comma, then. So that was the major operator, that if then. So that's the hook. And you'll notice that even the in step two, right, even uh, the components are put there in English. Right? It's a partial symbolization because when we, when we symbolize those components, especially for the consequent, as it appears in two, right, especially for the consequence there, there's quite a lot of logical structure. So what she's going to do is repeat the process Right for the antecedent and the consequent. So looking at two, I mean the antecedent is pretty simple. It's just that'll become I dot U. But look at that consequent. I've got to figure out what the major operator of that is. Right? What's the major operator of that? Put put that symbol down. Again, put the components in their place. Right, and um, put the components in the place, and then symbolize them. So it's top down. Right, major operator. Put the thing, the components in their place. Uh, and then take the component. Components are themselves subformulas. They're themselves uh, complete sentences. What's the logical form of that? Right. You're repeating the process. What's the logical form of that? Find the major operator. 
put the component, write the symbol for that down, put the components in their place, <clears throat> that's what she does. And that's how she gets through to a complete symbolization by the end. So that's the part of the process which you just need to run through, read through, follow every step, read it through 20 times until you, until you get it um, for both those examples. Run through especially 66 and 68. All right, I'll come back in the next part and start doing, oh, you'll see me apply the method to some of the exercises.